Hey everyone. Well, as of me posting this video, MK11 is officially out. It's been a while. I've been waiting for this game for a long time. And since I've been waiting for so long, I thought that I would rehash one of my old video ideas I did back in Injustice 2, which a lot of people liked, which is giving you a couple of tips on how to play the game, how to improve online and how to begin learning Mortal Kombat if this is your first fighting game. Now I'm making this video because these types of videos really helped me out when I was starting out and now that I have some experience with fighting games I thought it's time that I give back to the community. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into these tips. Starting with a couple of bonus tips. Uh, these are just kind of setting slash mechanical things. Uh, that's why I'm not counting them as the main five. However, I would strongly recommend turning off release check and turning on fatal blows on hold in the options. Now, just to explain what this is, release check is a really weird NRS only thing. I'm fairly sure NRS is the only one that does it. It's the only fighting game where it's on by default, I'm pretty sure. Uh, release check essentially makes it so that your inputs register after you let go of the button instead of when you press it in. And release check, let me tell you, can really mess you up. If you're having trouble doing a combo, doing a combo string or a special move in practice mode, it might be because you have release check turned on. I know a few people like playing with it on. However, if you're starting out, I would say turn it off first. And then if you don't like that, try turning it on. Now, fatal blows on hold is another option. It basically makes it so that you don't waste your fatal blows when you don't want to. If you don't have this turned on, fatal blows trigger by default, which can lead to a situation where you waste one of your fatal blows right out of the gate, uh, whereas it could be better used in kind of clutch situations at the end of rounds or when you need to make a comeback, etc. Since you can only use them once per game, I would strongly recommend turning on the option where you have more control over when you use your fatal blows. All right, let's get into the main tips, starting with tip number one, make sure to use practice mode. Practice mode is incredibly important for fighting games. You will be spending a lot of time there if you want to get good at this game and want to learn how to play. Now, the obvious thing you do in practice mode is learn characters. It's great for learning strings, special moves, practicing combos, but there's also so much more you can do with practice mode. First of all, the biggest thing it offers is that it allows you to learn how to counter certain moves. Whether you are getting beat by an annoying combo string or an annoying special move, go to practice mode and see how to counter it. Practice mode is also really great for learning frame data, which we'll get into in a little bit. It's great for learning, as I said, how to defend, how to block, how to move your movement options, walk speed, jump speed, etc. How to anti-air moves, which is really important in this game. Basically, practice mode is your go-to for anything. And you know, people think that practice mode is boring. It doesn't have to be. There are ways of setting it up where, you know, you're just constantly learning things. I'm planning on later making a tutorial on how to effectively use practice mode. So yeah, until then, stay in practice mode because it's really important. Tip number two would be to play against human opponents, whether you're playing online or preferably playing with friends. I mean, when you are learning a fighting game, it is always best to practice against people with your skill level. So if you have a couple of friends who are also learning MK11, it's really good to fight against them because you will be learning together and you won't feel like you're getting steamrolled by someone who already knows the game. Online is also really great for that. I would say stick to casual matches over ranked matches. However, I don't know how that's gonna work with kind of the weird competitive mode settings and all that with MK11. However, online is a great tool. This game has an excellent netcode, so it's not gonna feel like there is a one to two second delay between what you're doing and what's happening on screen. And playing against actual human opponents is the best way to learn. Generally, I would say avoid using the computer for practicing. The computer is really good for one thing and one thing only, and that is to learn how to do combos in the heat of the moment pressure situations. Other than that, the AI on easy and normal is basically a pushover. On hard and very hard, it basically cheats by reading your inputs. 
Also, you have to consider that the AI doesn't play like a regular human at all, as in the moves it uses, the way it uses them, it doesn't reflect anything that an actual person would do. And practicing against the computer too much can actually impart some bad habits on you. So I would say do it. It's okay to do multiverses and all that, but practicing against computer for going online is generally a bad idea. Tip number three would be to have a basic understanding of what frame data is, which I mentioned earlier, but also don't go too deep into it in the beginning. Frame data determines any fighting game. It basically determines how fast things are happening and how fast your moves are in relation to that. Generally early on, it's okay just to understand what's safe and what's unsafe. In NRS games, the rule mostly is that anything from minus five up until negative one is considered safe. You can check frame data in practice mode. Any move will have a uh, block advantage, startup frames, and that's the two you should be really looking at for now. Startup frames and block advantage. If the block advantage says minus five until minus one, the move is considered safe or extremely difficult to punish. Negative five is right on the edge. This means that if you block this move, you cannot counter against your opponent. They'll be able to block. However, a minus five move means that you're giving the opponent the quote unquote turn. So if I do a move against my opponent, that's minus four and they block it. If I try to press a button and they press a button, they will win unless they're using a very slow move, but in general, they will beat you out. If on block advantage, a move has zero next to it, that means that if you do that string or move, at the end of it, neither you or your opponent are at an inherent advantage. You're basically resetting the situation. Anything above zero is moves that are considered plus. That means if you use these moves and the opponent blocks them, if they do something and you do something, you will have the advantage. Uh, plus moves are good for keeping up pressure but they generally have other disadvantages, like they start with a high attack which can be docked, or most of them in this game I think have gaps in between them. The other thing to understand is startup frames, it's basically how fast a move starts. Very simple. I would say in general, if you block a move and you cannot counter against your opponent, and you see that the move shouldn't be safe, it might be because you're not using a move that's fast enough. Most characters, their down ones, down threes, one one strings are their fastest moves. Moving on to tip number four, I would say it's really good to learn to recognize your bad habits and work on getting rid of them. It's just natural that new players will pick up a lot of bad habits and it really just comes down to how fast they can and how effectively they can get rid of these bad habits. Some things that new players tend to do is number one, jumping too much. This is the biggest thing I always see. Jumping has its uses in fighting games and in MK11, but MK11 is a very, very grounded game. Anti-airs are extremely strong and they lead to big damage if you get anti-aired. So only jump when you really need to. If your opponent is close to you and they do a projectile, it is perfectly okay to jump over and punish them. Second thing that new players tend to do is that they tend to not block enough or at all. It's just, I would say, don't be scared of blocking. Blocking everything your opponent throws at you can cause your opponent to become frustrated and make a mistake. If you are stuck in the corner and you're trying to get out, sometimes it is best to just block and block and wait until your opponent makes a mistake. That's why I would say it's good to go into practice mode and practice how to block against fairly common characters. Finally, I would say that new players tend to focus a little bit too much on learning combos over learning the basics of these games. Something I did as well. I could do huge combos in MKX, but for a long time I didn't actually know what the hell I was doing. Combos are good. It's great to practice. It's great to get into the moveset, kind of learn the strings, learn the special moves. However, as I said earlier, practice mode is useful for so much more than that. I would say that someone who has bad combos and knows spacing, frame data, uh, how to punish things, etc., will have an advantage over someone who has good combos but none of the previously mentioned things. And the final tip, this is the real feel good tip, is do not get discouraged. Fighting games are fucking hard. 
and early on you will get destroyed a lot you will not know how to do the moves you will not have combos it's going to be a mess you will get steamrolled i will get destroyed a lot as well early on and it's completely okay the problem comes when people lose and then they start blaming stuff oh that guy was spamming oh that character is cheap there's too much zoning in this game all of these things lead to a very bad mindset sometimes sure it's okay to get salty it's okay to rage a little bit but if you are constantly blaming other things and constantly blaming the other side you are probably making a ton of mistakes and you are not recognizing them at all i can tell you plenty of people who are like that who are streamers slash youtubers people who constantly rage and ban people and all that we we know a few again instead of blaming stuff look at what you did wrong look at what you could have done better if you get beaten by someone spamming one move go into practice mode and learn how to counter it if you think zoning is too big a problem learn how to counter it there is great counters for zoning in this game judging by the beta if you think a character is cheap sure characters can be better and can be worse but everyone has weaknesses again practice mode is great to learn that overall the more you look into what you're doing wrong instead of blaming the opponent the quicker you will get better at this game so all in all hope you guys enjoyed these five little tips hope that they will help you because again i was helped out a ton by a bunch of youtubers early on when mkx came out and hopefully these help out people as well so if it did help you make sure to like comment and subscribe there's going to be a ton more mk11 videos coming on my channel character breakdowns other kind of tips fighting techniques and all that actual online matches there's going to be everything also you will see on my screen a link to my discord and i'll also leave it in the description you can join and we can talk about fighting games or just shoot shit talk about memes whatever it's also the best way to stay updated on my content and on when i'm streaming so hope you guys enjoyed again more mk videos in the future and yeah peace out guys see you next time